This is Scumples, and today I'll be showing you how to make this animation using Blender. I'm going to try to make the camera tracking part brief, so if anything is confusing you, ask a question in the comments or watch this video by CG Matter. The link is in the description. Now let's get started. First, you have to film the original video. To make the video trackable, we need to add tracking markers to the wall. You can use a printed sheet of tracking paper, but I'm just going to use sticky notes arranged in a rectangle measuring roughly 1 by 2 feet. Now film the wall and make sure to keep all the markers in view of the camera at all times. Upload it to your computer and open Blender. With the new general scene open, switch to the movie clip editor. Click open and locate the video you just made. Now we'll change the frame rate of the output to the frame rate of the video that we took. My video was taken in 29.97 so that's what I'll switch it to. Now click set scene frames in prefetch and create a new file for the image sequence we're making. Now we'll go into the compositing workspace and we'll set up our nodes, which are simple for now. Enable nodes, delete the render layers node, and connect a movie clip node. Now open your video clip and render the animation. Once that's done, go back to the movie clip editor, get rid of the original video, locate the output folder, and open the first image. Select Normalize and turn the correlation to 0.9. I turned off the red channel to try to get more contrast, but this was unnecessary. Now we need to add the tracking markers. To do this, simply control left click on the corner of a sticky note. Use the image in the tracking panel to make small changes, and alt right click to start tracking. Keep watching the tracking panel, and if you notice that the sticky note starts to drift, then make the correction. When you've tracked the point to the end of the timeline, then go back to the beginning and make a new tracking marker. Make at least 8 markers, I'll be using 2 on each sticky note. When all 8 trackers are down, go to the solve tab, click keyframe, focal length, radial distortion, and then solve camera motion. When it's done computing, it will give us a solve error. Mine is 0.57, and usually you want it to be less than 0.5, but I decided that this is good enough. Click Setup Tracking Scene. Then select any three tracking markers and click Floor. Finally, click any tracking marker and set it to the origin. Open up the 3D viewport and delete the default cube. Now create a cube. We're going to make this into a picture frame. Make it flatter by scaling it down on the z-axis and moving it above the x-axis. The xy plane is going to be our wall, so we want the picture frame above it and whatever is going into the picture frame to be below it. I'm just going to tweak the dimensions a little bit and when I'm happy with the shape, I'm going to select both of the large faces, press I to inset, and then delete the inserted face. Then I'll join these edges to complete the picture frame. Now if we go into camera view, we'll notice that the frame does not look right. To fix this, scale and rotate the frame until it looks like it's hanging upright. Then move it to cover the sticky notes or markers that you have placed on the wall. When you move the frame, press G, Shift Z so that it doesn't move along the Z axis. When you rotate it, press R, Z so that it only rotates along the Z axis. This is to make sure that the frame stays flat against the background plane. Now we need to make a green screen inside the frame that we can key out later. Select a loop and use P selection to separate it. Enter edit mode for this new object, then press A, F to fill it. Use G, Z to move it down on the Z axis to the back of the frame. Now we'll create a new material for this plane. Open the shader editor, create a new material, and delete the principal BSDF shader. Now insert an RGB node and connect it to the material output node. I'm going to set this to a green color which works because I don't have a lot of green in my original shot. Now I'm going to make the material for the frame and it's not going to be anything too crazy, just a simple BSDF with a black color and tweak roughness and specular values. And at this point we can go ahead and delete the background plane because it's not really doing anything. 
We could make it a shadow catcher, but a picture frame doesn't make a very noticeable shadow, so I'm just not going to. Now in the output properties, we can change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, which makes a little more sense for me. Now we can make a new output folder, I'll call mine output2. Click accept, then go to the render properties tab, and under the film section, click transparent. Now let's go over to the compositing tab. Delete the movie clip node and add in the render layers node. Now if we render our image and remember to connect our render layers node to our composite node, you'll see that the background has turned transparent. Now we'll open the movie clip node and clear the last clip that was stored in there. We can go ahead and press open and then open the first image of our new image sequence. Now insert a mix node and place it on top of the existing line. Use the output from the render layers node as the factor for the mix node and use the image output from the render layers and the movie clip nodes as the image input. Now we'll want to make the green screen in our shot transparent. We'll do this by inserting a keying node and using the eyedropper tool to select our green screen. Now double check that all these nodes are plugged into the composite node and render your image sequence. With our sequence rendered, we can go back to the Layout tab. Select the frame in the green screen and press M to move it to a new collection. I'll name the collection Hidden, but I'm not going to hide it yet. We can go ahead and hide the green screen now with H to make it easier to see what we're working with. Now we'll insert our artwork. You can use any 3D model inside the plane, but for this tutorial I'm just going to use a Suzanne. Using basic transformations, we can align the head so that it fits within the frame. I'll also be adding a subsurf modifier to the model. Now go into side view and make sure that the monkey head is behind the frame. Now after some minor adjustments we can go ahead and put the head into the foreground collection and hide the hidden collection. I'll quickly give the monkey some color with a basic principled VSDF shader. Unless you'd like to have transparency in your final image, I'd suggest you add a background by inserting a plane, scaling it, and moving it behind the monkey head. I'll use an RBG node to give the background a single solid color. If we go back into the compositing panel, we can get rid of all the nodes we've been using before. I'll just move them below in case I need to use them to re-render any scene. Insert a movie clip node and replace the stored clip with the first image from the output 2 folder. Connect it to the viewer and composite nodes and then enter a render layers node. Now is a good time to render the image to make it easier to see what we're working with. Add an alpha over node to the node tree. Plug the movie clip into the bottom and the render layers into the top. Now in the Output Properties tab, set the output to a video format, such as FFmpeg. Remember to connect all your compositing tab, and then render the animation. And that's it. Your video should now show a picture frame with 3D elements inside. If you have any questions about the tutorial, ask them in the comment section and I'll answer them as soon as I can. See ya.